Pucks. Today, from Pancreas Snow Works, we look at the fine collection that is the Dragons of Cathay. Step forward, if you please, to take put your bids. Primarchs and Emperors with half a brain. Well, uh, that's uh, not really saying much now, is it? Warpugs, this came off the Patreon request from Get Zerged. I'm happy to thank you very much, Get Zerged, for this request. We're going to jump right into this. Warpugs, what do I know about Cathay? Not that much, except for the Lions of Cathay. I know that they're elves. I assume that they're elves. I assume we're talking about Warhammer Fantasy. I'm probably wrong. I'm most likely an idiot. We'll find out. All Pancreas Networks links are in the description below, guys. Be sure to subscribe to him, check him out. Let's get into it. This video was sponsored by Fabletics. Cathay has turned into something incredibly interesting within the context of Warhammer as a whole. Oh, Obviously, Cath there's the fact that it's just... What was I thinking about the lions, the... the they were elves. It was the White Lions of Hoth. Hoth, not Cathay. You can see it's been a little bit. And the pups are all here. Just been expanded upon like it has. Old Cathay was like five pages of lore, which admittedly was still about four and a half more than Ender Koresh ever got. But even beyond that, it's interesting compared to, of course, the pre-existing factions, but also Warhammer 40k. In what must have been on purpose, it's come to have something pretty equivalent to the Emperor and the Primarchs. The Dragon Emperor rules Cathay, even if the nitty-gritty of it is left to his children, and they get up to all sorts of nonsense while he's gone. That right- Are there 18 of them? 21 in reality, but 18 overall. There. That right there is how it forms a phenomenal comparison between fantasy and 40k. Stop me if this sounds familiar, but a godlike being who nonetheless heavily dislikes religion forms a united empire of mankind to hold back the forces of chaos. Okay. He has secret plans to ultimately defeat them, and spends most of his time not telling his children what the hell he's actually doing. Okay. His children spend as much time fighting with each other as they do outside forces, and frequently have to be told to calm down when daddy can't take their nonsense any longer. Hmm. Now, where have I seen that one before? The difference of course, being that the Dragon Emperor doesn't seem to view his children with outright contempt. The Dragon siblings are at least given enough responsibility and trust that they haven't ripped Cathay in half yet. And Yay. perhaps most crucially, they've all got a mama kicking about who doesn't throw them into hell as infants. They Thanks, Erda. Thank you so much for the gift that keeps on giving. That last bit in particular, it's quite important in your formative years to not spend a good chunk of them in the warp. It has to yeah. be on purpose, but it's not a one-to-one. -one. The dragons of Cathay are what happens when you make Primarchs, but don't drop the ball at every given conceivable opportunity. <laughs> so today, let's talk about them. Okay. Even though GW pranked all of us and revealed Cathay and Kislev aren't coming soon to the old world, these children of the dragons have managed to become far more interesting, at least to me, than any melodramatic demigod in space ever could be. But before we begin your regularly scheduled Warhammer programming, you should know that this video was sponsored by Fabletics. Fabletics makes the finest and most comfortable sportswear to ever exist. Okay. Any kind of athletic wear you can think of, they've got it. Mesh tees and shorts, they've got bangers like the Rec Mesh Hero Tee and the Essential Rec Mesh Shorts, plus a snazzy little fun metal hat to go with it. Black and white not your thing? Well, don't you worry, because you can get them in red too, with the trucker hat and everyday crew socks to boot. But perhaps you're like... Remember your chucker hat. Like me and preferred longer clothing. In that case, allow me to introduce you to my personal favorite. Do we have the same exact glasses frames for our glasses? Is this a thing? Is this a thing? The brake line track jacket and pants. With a white fundamental hat to make the outfit pop, I've straight up started wearing this around the house. It's just so damned comfortable. Might be a bit hot right now to wear this outside, but come fall and spring, this would be the perfect outfit to get a morning jog in with. And if you think the clothes are just fashionable and comfortable, buckle up because Fullbuttocks isn't done yet. With the VIP program, you get a whole load of benefits. Get yeah. two pairs of shorts for $19 when signing up to be a VIP, save up to 50% on all products every single time you shop, and each month $59.95 will give you a credit to redeem a two-piece outfit or item up to a hundred dollars. Did you think I was done? I'm absolutely not. You get monthly drops, That's early nice. access to their styles, VIP-only sales on top of everything else, and free membership to their Fit app. And huh. to put the cherry on top, as long as you do so between the first and fifth of the month, you can skip as often as you'd like on your VIP membership. No questions asked, no charges, just like that. Staying active, even just a bit, is important, and there's no better option than Fabletics to wear while you're getting in that daily exercise. Go uh -huh. to Fabletics 
Geeks.com slash pancreas and sign yourself up for the VIP program to get yourself not only those two pairs of shorts for $19, but all those fantastic deals on the best athletic wear to ever exist. Now then, let's see what happens when you get an emperor who's remotely competent in what he does. The Emperor of 40k is not incompetent. He's just complicated. The Dragon Children, much like the Primarchs, are the more or less demigod children of the Dragon Emperor of Cathay, okay. the divine but not quite ruler of the entire nation. Much like their brethren 40,000 years in the future, they all have their individual talents and were created from the genetic material of the male divine leader of a nation. Unlike the Primarchs, they were not created in test tubes, using scientific and magical methods to create the ultimate generals for Big D's war effort. You see, when a daddy dragon and a mommy shapeshifter who may or may not be a dragon herself love each other very much, they <laughs> go at it like rabbits until they have nine children. The wow. dragon siblings okay. were just born naturally, no combining perpetual DNA and stealing warp energy, or whatever the hell theory is actually true, like with the Primarchs. Incidentally, if you caught what I said, you might have noticed they may not be pure-blooded dragons. The Dragon Emperor is a dragon, a spectacular one to be sure, but the Moon Empress might be the last of a race of shapeshifters. Both of them being incredibly powerful magic beings, however, meant that the end result was much the same as the Primarchs. Each of the dragon siblings is incredibly powerful, capable of of things no mortal man could hope to match. While okay. the Dragon Emperor can shapeshift himself, it's possible the Moon Emperor's being a shapeshifter is the main way it's passed down to their kids. If it's not something they just inherited as a result of their parentage, it might have been her teaching them all how to do it. To my knowledge, an exact birth date for any of the Dragon siblings has never been revealed, but by... Wow. I don't know whether to be disgusted by this piece of art or... disgusted. Yeah, disgusted would be... I don't know what shit I discussed I am, but yeah, it's it's there. Like, especially about this thing right here. I'm not sure what this thing is, but it disgusts me. Biologically, every single one of them is immortal. While Daddy Dragon and Mommy Moon predate the Great Catastrophe, no mention of their children was made during this time, so we can assume they came about after Chaos started causing trouble for everyone. Meow Ying is the oldest of the Dragon siblings left, but we'll talk about each one of them more in depth soon. Okay. The Dragons of the East are rather aloof even for mighty dragons, especially in how they view their Western cousins. They consider the ones in the rest of the world to be lesser for how they let mortals ride them into battle. Hold on a second. Come here, you. <laughs> Why are you up here making noise, huh? Are you are you trying to communicate with me? Why? She got into trouble earlier. She was being mean. Were you not being mean? Were you not? Little angry thing. Go on it as an insult to their status as powerful dragons. Indeed, they also have a low opinion of the elves because of this, viewing a mortal who mounts a dragon to be something obscene. Imric undoubtedly shed many tears when he heard of this, for it means Miao Ying is forever out of his reach. <laughs> They're also not a fan of the Lizardmen, or at least the Dragon Emperor probably isn't, given how the Old Ones radically altered the world's climate from what it was when the dragons ruled over it. The Lizardmen also killed a whole lot of dragons with T-Rexes, which has to be something of a diplomatic incident at the very least. A little bit. Of course, they do still trade with the elves because personal grievances are all well and good, but money is money no matter who's giving it. And depending on how you mean the word, the dragon siblings are just as guilty of being mounted by mortals as their western cousins are. Those dragon blooded generals you can recruit in a Cathay run are the direct descendants of the dragon children and a mortal they took a liking to. They're huh. far enough removed they can't turn into a dragon, but they're certainly more than just normal people. To further the 40k comparison even further, the dragon em- Why are you yelling? Stop yelling! Hey! Hey! Why are you yelling? I'm trying to get things done. Why are you yelling? This is what I live with. Look at her. She hears my wife walking around upstairs and she's losing her mind over it. Emperor and Moon Empress rarely, if ever, interact with their realms directly for long. They lay the foundations of what would become Cathay, and the Emperor apparently built the Great Bastion, but for the most part, they're very hands-off. He even has a secret plan to defeat Chaos that we know very little about, although it will come up again shortly. 
Yeah, it failed, but so did the Emperor, so you can hardly begrudge him the point. For his part, he's at least let one of his children know the basics of it, Yuan Bo, because that's part of his campaign objectives in Total War Hammer 3. Both husband and wife rule Cathay with equal power, so at the very least we know Big D treats the immortal powerful women in his life better than Big E did. And then again, Erda did throw the Primarchs into hell, so perhaps that's not much of a criticism to be making against the guy. I'd probably be pretty upset at that one too. The two of them and their children also aren't a fan of being worshipped as gods, or gods in general for that matter. There's a At least there's that. You don't have that kind of psychopathy going around. Pretty good argument to be made that they predate all of them, certainly newer gods like Sigmar at least. They view divine entities as meddlers and interlopers in their affairs. And given how they can remember a time before chaos invaded, it makes sense they don't have a shining view on the divine interfering with the mortal world. For their own part, the people of Cathay don't technically worship them, but let's be honest, it's absolutely absolutely worship in all but name. Sure, they don't view him as a god, but it's like if Big E got what he wanted and people didn't view him as a god outright. Mm -hmm. They still worship the Dragon Emperor and the family and view them as something far above what any mortal person could hope to achieve or become. And if you come in and start saying bad things about the Dragon family, you're going to get beaten in the streets for heresy against their not religion. Now the yeah, Dragon Emperor go. and Moon Emperor still remain rather mysterious, given that they've jointly taken the role of Fantasy Emperor of Mankind. And for just the briefest of moments, I'll stop making fun of the Emperor in space, because the Emperor in China has also got a couple of missing children to account for. Now's as good a time as I need to talk- Oh good, Battle of the Bastards. Yes. ...about his kids, so we'll start with the ones that are just flat out not present in Cathay. I promise to try to say all their names correctly. Go Two for of them it. just don't have names and are completely unknown. Really? We know absolutely nothing about any of them in terms of what they did, what they look like, literally nothing. With that- Why does that sound familiar? That being said, there is a possibility that one of them was killed by Archaon. In his quest to become the Ever Chosen, he battled a dragon named Yen Ya Long. This dragon was sworn to Zinch, and while it was a massive chaos dragon, it was described as being serpentine in nature, as opposed to how dragons are usually depicted as in Warhammer. Uh -huh. Granted, it also had three heads and multiple wings, but we can probably assume there was some chaos dickery going on to make that happen. What in worship Zinch, that? sometimes you get extra limbs and or heads. It's just what happens. The armor of Morkar Archaon wears made him immune to the dragon's fire, and when it ate him, he ripped his way out from the inside. That's a terrible case of indigestion. Now it should be noted that the only things hinting that this is one of the missing children is the fact that it's described as Serpentine and has a Chinese sounding name, but in the land of Warhammer writing that's usually enough to go off of. And to True. my knowledge, the dragon children and their parents are the only actual dragons in Cathay, so I imagine the only possibility is that this dragon was one of the missing children, or there was a third all-powerful dragon hanging around Cathay for a bit. This also only accounts for one of the unknown siblings. The other one? To the dustbin of history with you, Bozo. For the first of the missing kids we do know about, Shen Zhu. She's described as the bringer of light and hope, and was beloved by her siblings. In fact, if there was a purpose for her existence, it was to be Fantasy Vulcan, the one everyone loves and the one who just makes everyone sit down and get along with themselves and the common man. Her or... Fantasy Angron. Her main goal indeed was bringing harmony between the dragon siblings and their Cathayan subjects. This went to the point that Miao Ying said if they can find her again, not only were their family no peace, but the entire damned planet would. So either hmm. she's all powerful and just happens to be a nice person, or she's so nice it has an area of effect where if you're close to her, you become a better person by proximity. Of course, all of this is rather problematic because the way she went missing was to just wander up into Norska one day. Didn't seem to be on a mission or anything, she just walked up north and vanished. Which is a problem because Norska is many things, but a vacation destination is not one of them. For Cathay's part, she must have been missing for some time, because there was a period in its history known as the Time of Darkness and Disharmony, where huh. the dragon siblings just went at each other like cornate berserkers. In short, it was Fantasy China's version of the Warring States period. It only ended when Big D came back and told them all to cut the shit, and during <laughs> that time, not Sun Wukong ended up taking control of Cathay. So finding Shenzhou would be really helpful for the Cathayans. Unfortunately, there's pretty substantial odds that she's dead, because her plotline is that of Cathay's plotline in the Total War Hammer 3 three game mode that isn't an immortal empire, so you're never gonna play it again. Ursin apparently witnessed her fate, but even if you do win as Cathay, there's a noticeable lack of Shen Zhu in your empire. So she's either dead, or Ursin was only able to tell you where she went for a future adventure and or DLC. Actually, she's- Probably a DLC. Probably no one everything a DLC.
Missing and Yin Ya Long had three heads. Oh god, what if the two missing ones and her got dragon centipeded into some Zichian monster? If that's the case, then her ultimate fate is getting murdered by Archeon, much like the setting. The other name missing sibling <laughs> is Shiyama. Unlike Shenzhou, she's confirmed dead. She was the firstborn child of the Emperor and Empress, and was slain before any of the others were born. Nowadays, she spends her time sleeping beneath the very bluntly named Dragon River, apparently guiding the souls of the dead to the underworld with the help of her monks. Given how Cathay has vampire problems of its own due to Neferata shenanigans, she might also have a hand in dealing with them. But that Okay, Conrad Curse, there we go. That's speculation on my part. Either way, I'm sure Moore appreciates the help in guiding and guarding the dead. Of course, there's a very real chance that in the end times, she was devoured by Nagash alongside Moore once he became Death Incarnate, so perhaps she should have chosen a different profession. For the dragons that are still around and kicking, we'll go in order of Total War relevancy. Miao Ying is therefore first. With Shiyama busy being dead, she's the oldest child remaining, and is apparently daddy's favorite. If you'll hey. excuse my Sigmund Freuding for a bit, I can't help but wonder if that's because Big D wanted a replacement for Shiyama and Miao Ying was born a girl. Going forward, though, I'm gonna stop making rather rude assumptions oh. about their family dynamic. Oh and she man, is an that's rough. Powerful warrior, so it's not like she hasn't earned it to some extent. The strongest of the dragon siblings, in fact, in theory at least, she can rip you in half without needing to bother turning into a dragon. If she does go through the effort of turning into a proper dragon, then it's probably best to make peace with whatever your chosen god is, because you do not have long left on the world. <laughs> She's also a lore of life wizard, so she can keep her army alive. Live longer to assist her in ripping you a new one. Her Why are they yelling? Do you not like dragons or something? Shush! Personality and role is an interesting mix of being above all the drama of her station, while also perhaps being the most insufferable person you could imagine talking to. On the one hand, she's the one in charge of the Great Bastion's defense in the right. Northern Province. Let me get this taken care of because they're not going to stop. Sorry about that. They were just a little bit rambunctious. They kept on. They, they still don't understand what upstairs and downstairs is. So when my wife walks around upstairs, they just go ape. So apologize for that. I'll have them all and like hanging from the ceiling in little harnesses next time. That might actually be fun. That might actually be fun. I should think about doing that. Sassy wouldn't mind at all. Pippa, I'm not sure. We'll have to check provinces in general. She's constantly facing down chaos invasions trying to break in, and commands millions while she does so. Immortal dragon or not, I imagine that would take a toll on anyone. She goes through never-ending war against eldritch abominations, while countless millions of her subjects die despite her best efforts, with the knowledge that if she falters once, Cathay is going to be going through some real hard times. Mm -hmm. Not the sort of thing I would imagine making someone a joyful person. It's no. to the point that I'm pretty sure she's the single dragon sibling that's never had any mortal children. She tolerates no dissent and disharmony from the mortals under her, and while this might make her come across as the fun police, you can't have that kind of thing going on when chaos is at the gates. Cold and aloof is a very common way to describe Miao Ying, and she's overall probably the last dragon sibling you'd want to be stuck in a long elevator ride with. The lion. Again, this is hardly a criticism so far. You spend every waking moment fighting the forces of chaos and have anything but a thousand yard stare, and then you can judge her for it. She's True. also her father's favorite as mentioned before, and is sent on more important missions because of both that and her power. This has resulted in the rest of the dragon siblings being rather jealous of the clear favorite child, which for Miao Ying's part has done very little to calm her tempers or ego. Every now and then you click on her in Total War and she mentions how she's the favorite and the firstborn, all the while with a tone in her voice making it very clear she's aware of how much of a braggart she's being. To be as generous as possible to her, she's the ultimate girl boss who knows her worth. Being less generous, we get it, Miao Ying, you're the favorite child. Can you please be just a little <laughs> bit less of an asshole about it? She really does seem to be cold and aloof until one of her siblings tells her to get bent, because she was just as much a contender in the time of darkness and disharmony as everyone else was. But again, she's the one in charge of keeping chaos out of Cathay. If the worst thing that comes from that is being a bit arrogant, then go on ahead, Miao Ying. I wouldn't Do want it. to be stuck in a car ride with you, but we can all appreciate the work you put in. If I had to speculate her end times fate, it would be either getting killed by some chaos dwarf demon engine or other, or getting Grimgord. Those two factions were the ones most involved with the Great Bastion and Cathay, so given her position, that's her likely fate. Up next is Zhao Ming, the- Honestly... <laughs> she reminds me of the lion just because of her social awkwardness, and... To be honest with you... <sighs> I was actually kind of surprised to see the line of the first back. I always thought it would be Dorn. I'm just saying.
The Iron Dragon. He's in charge of governing the western provinces of Cathay. Due to both the region he rules and his own inclinations, he's one of the dragons that most commonly interacts with mortals, as the western regions of Cathay are where the Silk Road ends for incoming western merchants and starts for outgoing Cathayan ones. And yes, GW was not trying at all with that one because the Silk Road's equivalent in Warhammer is just the Silk Road. Zhao Ming is interesting. We'll do the positive stuff first because I quite like the guy. He's by far the most down-to-earth of the dragons. He's okay. the kind of leader who will crack jokes with his followers, and if you need to find him, the first place you should check is probably the local dive bar. I'm not sure if the dragons <coughs> of Cathay can get smashed, but Zhao Ming is certainly happy to spend time with his troops trying to find out. Failing that, you can also find him making more dragon-blooded generals for you to recruit in a Cathay run, if you catch my drift. I'm not a subtle <coughs> person, none of you are here for- Lehman Russ that it's canon that Zhao Ming fucks hard. This general willingness to interact with non-dragons extends to non-Cathayans as well. Him and Greece's Goldtooth are apparently good friends, with him having really? helped negotiate Cathay caravans being allowed to pass through the mountains of Morn without being eaten. Funnily enough, they have both bonded over having troubles with their respective fathers. Although in Zhao's case, he admits that he probably couldn't solve his troubles like Greece's did and just eat his dad, if only because no one has a stomach that big. There's right. also, of course, his barely, if at all canon, bromance with Balthasar Gelt, existing in entirely because in the Immortal Empires trailer, him and Gelt were seen together blowing a Skaven army to bits. As far as I'm concerned, it is canon. Gelt likes artillery, Zhao likes artillery, Gelt's a lore of metal wizard, Zhao's a lore of metal wizard, Zhao is a dragon ruler of a powerful empire, Gelt is supreme, they're absolutely bros. And this attitude of being a real pal has kept morale up in ways the other dragons just don't get. Sure, seeing a seven foot tall magical lady give a speech about Cathayan endurance against chaos and then turn into a dragon will make anyone fight harder. But Zhao's drinking and laughing about the one time he and the crew played pin the tail on the Skaven. It's just a whole lot more personal <laughs> with him. The rest of the dragons may care for Cathay, but Zhao cares for you. The problems with Yay. his siblings come in a whole slew of different ways. For one, they just think he's weird for doing that, either eccentric at best or wasting his time in sullying the good name of the dragon family at worst. Spending all his time dicking around with mortals, quite literally oftentimes, comes across to the others as in poor taste at the very least. It's a real yeah. lowbrow activity. There's also the fact that part of the region he rules over is known as the Warpstone Desert, and I'm sure you can immediately figure out how that might worry his siblings as well as explain why he's a bit eccentric. Warpstone does not a healthy mind make, and no. Zhao Ming unfortunately has a side gig of dabbling in alchemy. Naturally, for a man who lives in a desert of the stuff, Warpstone is one of the chief ingredients he uses, and it might have started corrupting his mind. He tells us he hears- Why would you mess with something the Skaven really just think is awesome? I just really don't understand that voices in Total War sometimes, and I have a feeling it isn't just his inner conscience. During eh. an interview with CA, someone asked if the gem on his headdress was Warpstone or just Jade, and the question was pointedly not answered clearly. Aside Ooh. from that, he lets cabals of alchemists operate within his territory with more or less free reign. This in particular extremely worries his siblings, <coughs> Yuan Bo in particular, because this is not sanctioned by the Dragon Emperor. He views it as dangerous to the safety of Cathay, but for Zhao's part, he just doesn't care. If his brother- So they borrowed elements of- Magnus and combine it with Lehman Russ. There you go. Whether or father issue an edict that he'll follow it if he feels like it, but otherwise he's just gonna blow it off. In spite of all this, he's the Moon Empress's favorite child, making him the mama's boy to Miao Ying's status as daddy's little princess. There She'll you usually go. shield him from the ire and wrath of the rest of the family when any get together turns a bit too hostile, and even gifted him his magical headdress that lets him do magic better. She's probably not the one that put a chunk of warpstone in it though, that was all him. For all it's worth though, he's probably fine as far as that term goes in Warhammer. Probably not. Volkmar the Grim has a Warpstone Eagle bolted to his chest and he's completely fine. I'm sure Zhao's insanity will stop at the voices. That's not even a hindrance, really. Luthor Harkon hears voices all the time, and he's the greatest admiral to ever exist. For his ultimate fate in the end times, I yeah, but is he okay? That's the that's the difference. But guess one of two things, depending on how generous you're feeling. The first potential death is likely getting overrun by Skaven. As you know, they love Warpstone, so Zhao Ming's demise might have come at the hands of them while they were overrunning the area for more of the stuff. Alternatively, and for a far less spectacular death, when Chaos was sweeping into the world in the end times and magic became far more prevalent, he might have just exploded. Went to work in the alchemy shop one day, magic was running rampant, and an experiment that would have otherwise been safe caused the warp 
Hearthstone he was working with to go critical. Hardly a glorious death for a dragon child of Cathay, but that's what happens when you mess with Warpstone. Uh -huh. Sometimes the haters are just right, and you should really stop what you're doing. Given his hobbies and disregard for what his father and siblings tell him, Did his I not just say this? is most likely Magnus. He ignores the warnings of both his father and siblings, and he's rather ostracized for it. And while it hasn't happened yet, it's very likely this will bite him in the ass sooner or later. The next dragon sibling, and as of time of recording, the last one to be a legendary lord, is Yuan Bo, ruler of the Central Provinces and administrator of the realm. Fitting for his position as an administrator, Gilliman. the Central Provinces he rules are relatively safe. Sure, in total war there's enemies to fight, and I'm almost certain you can find beastmen there if you look hard enough. But part of that is to give gameplay challenge to Cathay, and the other part of that is because beastmen are absolutely everywhere. <laughs> you can't really fault anyone in Warhammer for having beastmen in their backyard, so in all honesty, it's probably one of the safest places on the planet in the lore. On pay I mean, honestly, if you have more than four acres, you're going to have about six beastmen in the background anyway. I mean... With with what I have, I mean, at this point, you know, I'm I'm seriously, seriously, seriously wondering how many cryptids are in the back. I got a feeling I have at least six iterations of the Mothman behind me. That should be worrying me, but um, take it all down. I don't care anymore. Paper, and to the knowledge of both Cathay as a whole, and even to some extent his siblings, Yuan Bo is just Chinese Rabute Gilliman. He's Thoughts? a phenomenal bureaucrat, and by the nature of who? Hive mind. Hive mind. Who his parents are, he's undoubtedly powerful, but he's pretty unassuming, hardly the kind of guy to be making waves. He's a trustworthy and reliable guy as far as they know, and as a result, he's easily the most liked of his siblings. Aside from Shen Zhu, but she's gone right now, so we can hardly count her. Zhao Ming, as I said, disregards pretty much everything he has to say, but that's less out of personal hatred and more out of a general disregard for authority. You want Lehman Russ, Magnus. Bo really wishes Zhao would stop blasting Linkin Park and the offspring and just listen for <laughs> once, but to my knowledge, there's no true enmity between the brothers. All of this is stuff that the other dragon children should really consider reevaluating, because the other Primarch Yuan Bo takes after is Lehman Russ. Oh. His other title is nothing less than being the Emperor's Executioner. Him being one of, if not the weakest of the dragon siblings, is something he's more than happy to play up, and is a reputation he oftentimes helps spread. As it turns out, most people are going to underestimate the combat skills of the guy known for paperwork. Helping him out further in this area is that he's also Big D's spy master, and was gifted the service of the Onyx Croman by the Moon Empress to act as his own personal spies, in addition to whatever humans are under his command in this area. Kay. In fact, beyond any of the Primarchs, you know who Yuan Bo reminds me the most of? Comstar, from Battletech, if it was a really? single person. Sure, he's not hoarding technology or anything like that, but he's a nearly all-knowing spy master who has complete control over the administration of the Empire. Because he's a bureaucrat and a spy, he's not only handling your taxes, but going through them to make sure everything is going where it should. There's oh, not great. a single thing that happens in Cathay that goes on without his knowledge, and he certainly uses his position to move his siblings around like pieces on a chessboard. From the grandest armies being assembled to a discreet meeting between lords to the contents of your mailbox in particular, he knows it all. And well, if he I'm, doesn't I'm... know something, it... Look, you don't want to go there rooting their mom mailbox. There's nothing but sadness in there. Probably isn't worth worrying about. He just doesn't use this information to start full-on wars between his siblings like Comstar and the Great Houses, or own a secret army of advanced battle max, as much as he'd probably like to if he knew what they were. I guess if he ever gets lore about him goading a bunch of coronate warriors into a losing fight on a patch of farmland, we can really complete the comparison, but for now, Cathay and Tukayed isn't a thing. He's <laughs> also proof that entrusting your children with the slightest amount of responsibility and knowledge as to your ultimate plan is something you should really be doing, because Yuan Bo, out of all the dragons, seems to be the most involved in his father's schemes. His whole purpose for starting Total War in Lustria is to hijack the Lizardman's geomantic web to fuel his father's goals, and huh. there's been no hints that Yuan Bo is going to turn to chaos or in any way betray his father. Telling people what you're doing makes them trust you more? Why, that's absurd. He should have kept Yuan Bo in the dark and only ever tell him to trust me, bro. Surely... <sighs> I've got to talk to him sometime about like some of the things in there that that the emperor did towards his primarch sons i've really got to talk about that sometime because it really really goes deep that would have worked wonders. Yuan Bo, for his own personality, is a rather stoic fella, with some really? hints at him being the propaganda master of Cathay. He has a short- Now, doesn't he have a Dark Eldar waifu? 
short story written by David Geimer called Master of the Meteor Wind, where he deals with the changeling who is pretending to be Miao Ying. And before he sniffs her out, there's a passage where it's shown that he's immune to the taunts of all his siblings. Miao Ying may pretend she's above all the family politics and squabbling, but Yuan Bo is actually above it all. <laughs> the only person who can actually piss him off is the Monkey King, which is very funny because I imagine either the Monkey King is a smarmy little prick or he just flings literal shit at Yuan Bo like an actual monkey. I also can't help but imagine Yuan Bo is freezing now, ranting on and on about monkeys whenever he has the slightest reason to. While not as dismissive of mortals as the likes of Miao Ying, he also isn't nearly as fond of them as Zhao Ming is. He sees them as beings that seek to be controlled, for why else would they conjure up and worship things like the Chaos Gods if they truly wanted free will? Mm -hmm. Admittedly, the Chaos Gods certainly haven't been brought into being by mortals, at least in fantasy, but knowing the complete and total truth of Chaos is hardly something you could ask of the guy. If he existed in 40k, he'd be beyond spot on, and either way, he's got a point when it comes to willingly worshipping the bastards. He also does have at least a little bit of sass and ego in him. Towards the end of the short story from earlier, Miao Ying returns and is all blustery about him entering her lands without permission. He huh. responds without he's sure she can forgive him in the same way their dad will surely forgive her for nearly letting her lands go to complete shit in her absence. When she just stays well, silent cold. to that, he grins and goes, after all, you are the favorite child. You know, I actually <laughs> like Miao Ying as both a character and a legendary lord, but it is incredibly satisfying when that type of character is so firmly put in place like that. That bit is also the reason I said Miao Ying is, in theory, the strongest dragon child. It may just be because of Yuan Bo's position that she doesn't argue with him further, but you don't get to be the personal executioner of an emperor in Warhammer without packing a serious punch. In the end times, mm -hmm. Yuan Bo could have been done in by any number of things, really. Maybe he was overrun by Skaven, or Chaos Dwarfs, or Orcs, or given his total Warhammer positioning, maybe he was in Lustria doing that geomantic web stuff when the Skaven blew up the moon and he died with the continent. Might not Skaven. Not even once. The things you can do on enough warp stone. Not be a heroic 1v1 or a last stand against the odds, but getting taken out by the moon itself certainly speaks to someone's toughness, if nothing else. True. The second to last of the active dragon siblings is Li Dao, the fire dragon and commander of the southern provinces. There isn't much written about him, but we know he has quite the temper as is suitable for someone called the Fire Dragon. He constantly has to deal with incursions from both Koresh, Ind, and the Monkey King, although occasionally he allies with the Monkey King, which Sun Wukong Goku finds amusing. He's jealous of Miao Ying because he considers defending the southern borders to be an equally important task with none of the glory, which is either understandable or he needs to shut up and stop complaining that he doesn't have to fight Chaos Warriors. With his constant rantings about the Monkey King, maybe he's the one who's more like Frieza. At the yeah, I don't think I want to fight chaos on a daily basis if I don't have to. So maybe he should stop that. Or maybe Lor uh, Lorthor should pay him a visit. Lor I mean, Lorkin. Yeah, Lorkin. The pirate guy. You know who I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe then he wouldn't be so pissy about it moment, that's kind of the end of things, but here's hoping him and the Monkey King get a DLC to share in the near future. In the end times, he probably died to... Who cares? <laughs> His lore is mostly related to Koresh and Ind. Koresh and Ind's lore is like 50% bothering this guy. They all probably got devoured by the Skaven. And the last dragon sibling is Yin Yin, ruler of the Eastern Yin -yin. Provinces and the Grand Admiral of Cathay's Navy. Not only does she not have much lore, but what lore she does have makes her look real stupid. While the rest of the dragon siblings are largely focused inwards, Yin Yin wants to get out there and make everyone know the true might of Cathay. To do this, she would sometimes take Cathay's Lorgar. massive navy and go invade other places, like Lustria. During that invasion, a couple of Slan mage priests looked at the massive armada of Chinese ships that stretched across the horizon, thought that was rather off-putting, and drowned the entire fleet with a massive tidal wave. Only Yin Yin and one other dude managed to survive, and that other guy managed to relay the events that occurred to the Dragon Emperor himself. Old Allure had it where the Dragon Emperor was most likely pissed. Emperor led the invasion, but New Allure made it so that it was just a mistranslation of the titles that made people think it was him. In short, she's incredibly impulsive and so arrogant she wonders if High Elf Dragon Ships are named after her, which pisses her siblings off and shows that she clearly has no self-reflection ability. Yeah. And every now and again, she gets Lorgar. massive numbers of Cathayans killed in pointless excursions, which Lorgar. pisses her parents off. She's not well-liked. 
In the end times, I like to imagine she was sailing to Ulthuan while the elf civil war was wrapping up. She figured she'd show everyone that she truly is the greatest and that she should be taken more seriously. Then Ulthuan sinks and the tidal waves from that drowned her and her fleet. An appropriately anticlimactic end. Oh there you god, go. I think the Primark equivalent she has is Perturabo. Boo. Like pretty much everyone else, I don't really hope she gets a DLC Legendary Lord spot. There's no proper naval battles in Total Warhammer 3, and I would much rather Lee Dao get a spot instead. And even that's not because I find him super interesting either. I just hope the Monkey King comes along with him. <laughs> if you've been paying attention, you'll have noticed throughout this video that out of all the dragon siblings, exactly one of them fell to chaos. And that's a maybe fell to chaos, because it's never been confirmed if the dragon Arcane killed was one of the siblings. This is because the Dragon Emperor and Moon Empress realized that shocker, if you show your children the slightest amount of love, they won't turn to hell instead to get it. Beyond that, including them in both the direct rulership of Cathay and to some extent their secret plans, shows that they actually respect their dragon children and plan to keep them around even if war one day came to an end. For all the Dragon Emperor and Moon Empress have all their secret plans and have a habit of just screwing off to do whatever, they actually show their family love and respect. Yuan Bo and Miao Ying go on missions for their father whenever he needs them. Zhao Ming and his mother are very close, and he even says his father does still love him despite their strained relationship. Hmm. The only dragon who seems to be completely alienated is Yin Yin, and perhaps if she stopped drowning Cathayans <laughs> whenever she gets bored, she wouldn't be the black sheep of the family. Maybe. And given how little lore she has and that she hasn't rebelled yet either, she probably still has shown some level of respect and reverence. What I'm trying to say here is that the Emperor of Mankind is officially out of excuses for treating his sons like garbage and half of them turning against <laughs> him. You might say the God Emperor didn't have time because he had to conquer the whole galaxy, and to that Could I'd say that. the Dragon Emperor didn't have entire sectors worth of planets to help him govern Cathay. When the Emperor dipped out to work on the webway, he could have at least checked in every now and again to say hi and spend some lunchtime with the Primarchs. But he didn't, and among other reasons, this and the complete lack of trust and respect he showed in them caused them to turn against him. Even most of the ones that stayed loyal aren't exactly big fans of the guy. Big right. D, meanwhile, seems to be loved by all his children, even as some like Zhao Ming tend to ignore his request when it suits him. Both have their empires, both have their projects and plans for the respective worlds, and to be fair, both of them did ultimately fail. But one of them still had his family, and it sure as hell isn't the asshole bound to the Golden Throne for the rest of time. And that's the <laughs> dragon family of Cathay, chiefly the siblings. They can be childish, they throw their weight around to get what they want, and they're incredibly prone to infighting. But they haven't rent Cathay in half with a civil war to kill their dad, so at the end of the day, they're better off than the other batch of superpowered toddlers Warhammer is known for. Thank you as always to my wonderful channel members. You are the Yuan Bo to my dragon family, keeping this mess in line while I pursue my own secret project. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Either way, thank you for watching and take care out there. Wrap it up, my guy. Here it comes. I think Zhao Ming should be added to Fortnite because I really want to see him hit the gritty. Do you think he'd more do it or would it be Yuan Bo to seem like one of those with the kids kind of guys? You know, make him seem in touch with everyone. Or maybe he'd do it so people think he's a goofball and underestimate him further. Yes, I am discussing the intricacies of the dragon children hitting Fortnite dances. What of it? I'm willing to bet that... Warpugs... There is a lot of cause of and a lot of reasons to be concerned anytime you start talking about any one of the superhuman the superhumans of fantasy or 40k popping the gritty. And um quite honestly, I think that would be the most terrifying thing I've ever seen on the battlefield. Imagine Angron comes down from the sky, lands in front of the lands in front of Sanguinius, and then starts doing the gritty. I honestly would either think that something had gone intensely wrong, or I would be hoping that Sanguinius Tombstone Pile drove him from the Chinese steppe where the Imperial Palace is, all the way to the other side of the planet. Warpugs. I don't want I don't play Fortnite. I don't want to play Fortnite. Because seeing some of my childhood like, absolute... The, the fact that Goku and Vegeta might be busting the gritty in, in, Fort, in Fortnite is just upsetting to me for some reason. <sighs> the Dragons of Cathay. For some reason, I mixed up Cathay and Hoth at the beginning of this, and for that I will not forgive myself. But, once again, it's been a long time... Well, 
not really a long time since I've seen anything fantasy related, but it's been a long time since I did anything in fantasy. I think the most I ever did in fantasy was play Warhammer Online. <sighs> Frankly, I can't wait to see him do something else. Maybe a do or don't on Cathay if they ever get desktop models. Because from what I'm hearing from him, they haven't got the tabletop models for this group yet. Which, understandable, they're probably beta testing them in Warhammer 3. And one of these days I'm gonna get one of these days I'm actually gonna get a PC that can handle Warhammer 3. And I might have the time to play Warhammer 3. But until then, I'm gonna sob uncontrollably. Warpugs, thank you for joining me. Check out Pancreas No Works in the description down below. Make sure you subscribe to him. Subscribe to me. And I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>